It's time for the first comic call of 2019. I got some good key issues here I'm ready to show you. So if you want to see what they are, well, all you have to do is keep watching. Go, go subscribe to We Love Comics. We love, and we do, we love comics. This video is sponsored by PGX Grading Services. Get one free pressing of your choice when you grade 10 with the code We Love Comics Free Press. Link in description. Hello, my comic book enthusiasts. My name is Chris, and this is my channel, We Love Comics. And yes, even though it is the end of January, close to February already, I have a comic haul and the first one of the year that I'd like to share with you. So, as always, I want to tell people, wait until the end to see who's today's surprise subscriber shout-out. Um, if you're so kind, give them a little shout-out in your comment, whatever you put, because we always appreciate comments around here and the people that get the shout outs a lot of them ask for them so right on cue my cat comes so if you would be so kind to acknowledge them i guarantee you they appreciate it when they see it also if you any of these books that you see if they're books that you don't have and they pique your curiosity and there's something you want to pick up make sure especially if you go on ebay or amazon to buy any of these which i'm not selling of course but uh make sure you activate your cash back program because as of now, until the end of January, and it may switch, uh, you get 2% cash back. And if you've never signed up before, there's a link in the description. It's free to sign up. And if you spend $25 or more within the first 90 days, you get an additional $10 cash back. So if you've already signed up and it's been uh, less than 90 days, make sure you take advantage of that. Because once that 90 days passes, you no longer qualify for that $10 cash back. So... It's worth doing. So, with that being said, let's get this comic party started. Uh, this first one was a throw-in to uh, one of the comic purchases that I made. That was really cool of them. Uh, this is Teen Titans number 12, but this one is the second print. Uh, the way you could tell is it's got a red background. So, um, I don't know how much this one's worth. But this is the... I believe the first appearance of Batman Who Laughs. I don't think it's the origin, but I think it's his first appearance. Um, I have no idea what this one would be worth in a second print. But uh, considering I didn't buy it and it was free, I'm definitely not going to be complaining about that. Absolutely love this cover. It's nice to see they're giving this character the credit that it's due. Um, I hope it continues to go well because I just love the way that um, that character is drawn. So definitely an interesting book. I mean, the first print at this point is about anywhere from 75 to to $100. So if you could find the first print in the $50 or less range, scoop it up. All right, this is a book many people may not be familiar with. Um, this is one of those under-the-radar books, and that's how you can get some steals, and my cat's going to make sure you can't see it. But this is Wolverine issue number 88. Now, um, there is a little debate about this one, but... As far as my research is concerned, this is the first time that Deadpool and Wolverine actually meet each other. So it's not a mega key by any means, but especially if you're a Wolverine or Deadpool fan or both, uh, this is a under-the-radar comic that many people may not be aware of. So um, this was back in 1988. That was the year I graduated high school. Yes, I am old. Um, Andy Kubert cover. Definitely a very cool-looking cover. Not really that much detail, but, hey, it's still worth getting. I paid $1.64 for this. I got this at my local comic book shop. So you can get steals on this book, and it does have a little bit of significance, like I said, especially if you like Deadpool or Wolverine or both. So that's the first time that they've met, and I paid $1.64. Again, can't go wrong with that. All right. Independent book. This is definitely one I would recommend. Um, I don't know if there's a TV show or a movie that they've been talking about, or if it's out yet. I haven't heard much about it. Um, I think it still might be in the writing um, stage, but this is The Magic Order, issue number one. Now, they made the announcement about this a couple of months ago, and, you know, with so many things going on in the comic book world, people start to go from one direction to the other. It's what I call kind of the flavor of the month. So you can pick this one up fairly cheap if you find deals. Now, of course, you're going to have to do some hunting. You're going to have to have some patience. But every now and then, you're going to find that needle in the haystack because so many people are looking towards, you know, the next Marvel movie or the next announcement of a new movie character coming out that sometimes people forget some of the books 
that have that lull in between them announcing it and them actually putting it out. Because sometimes that could be years after the announcement before something gets done. But that's when you could snatch things up that many people forget about. So I only paid $7.49 for this book. Under $10 for this book is, in my opinion, a steal. Considering it's a three ninety nine dollars price tag, I didn't pay much more than cover. Uh, this is in really good condition. I um, thought I saw a tick, but that's actually part of the artistry. But this is cover A. Uh, definitely a good read. There's a couple of different variants. But if you can get even the regular cover, I would recommend it. All right. This one is a signed book. Um, yeah, it's a double signed book. This is um, the San Diego Comic-Con, the CBCDF variant of which is number one. Now, they were supposed to do either a movie or TV show, but this is an example of... Be careful when you invest in something because they made an announcement a couple of years ago and nothing has happened yet. So a lot of times like companies will buy the rights to things and then never do anything with it or it gets delayed. So who knows if something's going to come out of this. But if you can get them for cheap, it might be worth taking the chance on. So um, if they ever do a movie or TV show with this and it was just delayed, you know, you can end up finding some steals. Now, this looks like it's got a triple signature because there's a signature here, there's a signature here, and there's a signature here. But this says right here... Oh, okay, so there was they put it on two different lines. Okay, so it was signed by Scott Snyder, uh, Jock, I'm not really sure of his last name because they didn't write it, and Cliff Chiang on the 2015 Baltimore Comic Con. Um, so it's tri it is triple signed. I only paid $42.85 for this book. So who knows what will end up with this book. But for a triple signature book, looks to be in, you know, 9.6 to 9.8 condition. Worth taking the chance on. You may not agree, but that's okay. These are my opinion of books that I think you might want to try. If you don't agree, that means that's one less comic you have to say buy for. And uh, you save some money in your pocket and spend it on something else. All right, this is a book I got when I was a kid. But every now and then, if I find a deal, I will pick this up. Um, it, I'm sure it will lose steam a little bit after the second movie is out. That doesn't bother me because I've seen this book go to $40, $50. I'm not going to spend that price for this book, especially when I bought... I think I bought two of them the day they came out, so I paid two fifty for those. But this, of course, is Infinity Gauntlet issue number one. Absolutely love this cover. This is so nostalgic for me as, you know, growing up being a kid, actually reading. This was the first um, six, it's either six or seven part series. I think it's six, but correct me if I'm wrong, that I actually read and loved the story. Um, that's why I'm disappointed that Mephisto wasn't used at all. Hopefully, you never know. He might be in the second part, and I hope they do, because he was a pivotal character in this in this comic book. Um, I won't spoil why, but if you haven't read this series, I highly recommend it. To me, I think this is one of the greatest stories that the Marvel's, um, Marvel Comics wrote. But um, definitely a good book. Price is going down, so don't overpay for it. I paid $19.99. Um, at this point, I wouldn't spend more than that for that book. So if you see it for $50, $60, unless it's graded a 9.8, um, I would pass it up. If you can find it for like 25 or under, still worth getting. Speaking of worth getting, this is a book now I was telling people years ago to get. Um, every now and then I'll get one if I see a good price on a good condition book. This, of course, is Eternals issue number one. Um, they are still, as of now, going with the fact that the Eternals will be a pivotal, pivotal part of the MCU future. Um, with them now soon getting X-Men and Fantastic Four, I wonder if that may change. You never know, because like I say, don't. In, unless something is out there, things can change. So always keep in mind there are risks involved. That's why I tell people, if you're only getting it for speculative purposes, a lot of times you're going dis to get disappointed. With me, because I love comics, um, if this book ends up a dollar comic, I still don't regret it because I bought them because I love them. I'm not trying to make a business out of buying them and selling them or you know, just saving them for profit. But if it happens, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, crying that I made money on it if I sell them someday. But um, this is a book at this point, it's going between $75 and $100 and up. Now, of course, I'm talking ungraded. 
but um, I was able to manage to get this one for 50 bucks. This looks like easily a 9.0 or higher. Um, looks like, for especially you could tell by the top, it looks like no one's ever read this book before, that they just basically bagged and boarded it. I think the only major thing I can see is there's a tiny little bit of a rounding in the corner. Other than that, this looks pretty darn good. It looks like there's a little crease right here, but it doesn't break color. So this one I might end up getting, getting graded at one point. But for 50 bucks, especially this day and age now, at this time, not a bad price. All right, I've only seen one episode of the TV show, but so far so good. I really like it and hope it continues. Uh, this is definitely a book I would highly recommend getting. And again, one that you might find under the radar every now and then, because most people are looking for the key issues of Silver and Golden Age books, and sometimes these can slip under the radar, but this is Deadly Class, issue number one. Uh, it's amazing that this came out in 1987, um, because I don't remember ever seeing this book before. I don't, I can't be 1987, this book. That's weird. Maybe it's set in 1987. I'm not sure. I think that's it. Cause, uh, yeah, it, this definitely didn't come out in 1987. But anyway, I paid $19 and 32 cents for this book. Uh, because the show looks like it's going in the right direction. This book is now between 40 and $75. So if you could pick it up for around 40 or under, it's still worth it. But like I said, if, you, if you're if you patient and you um, bide your time, you will find deals. So to get this for under $20 for a first print, I'll take that. All right, so now some of the older books. We're getting into the more key issues. Uh, this was one of the books I bought when I was a kid. It was stolen. Um, this is a really low copy, but considering the price I paid, I'm not going to complain. Uh, this is Avengers number five. Nothing really significant other than the fact that, uh, one, it's an early Avengers, and two, this one's just very nostalgic for me because it's one of the earlier books that I bought when I was a kid. The one I had was easily an 8.5 and up because I had a lot of high-grade books back then. And uh, I think I probably spent $25 for the original one in a, probably about a 9.0 grade. Um Love this cover. Jack Kirby. Can't go wrong with that. I mean, all the characters and the colors just make it really pop out. But as you can see, this is a lower grade book. This is a 2.0 at best. But I'm still happy with it. Because like I said, it's more nostalgic for me than anything. Um, the lower staple is detached. Um, stains um, stains on the back. But I only paid $26.75. But it shows the times. I spent about $20 for this book back in the um, early 80s, and it was around the 9.0 grade. Now I can only get around a 2.0 grade for that price. Yeah, that's uh, as time goes by. All right. This is another book nowadays. It's gone down, and to me, that's a buying opportunity. So if I see a good deal, I'm going to pick it up. Many people are passing this comic by now. Uh, this is Fantastic Four number 46. It's the first appearance of a, a fairly known character, Black Bolt, um, from the Inhumans. So this is definitely a comic still worth getting. And because of the fact that the TV show is a flop and they're probably not going to do much with them for now, I mean, that can change. And you never know. They may use one or two characters in a movie um, that is not something out of the realm, especially when they're getting more cosmic. You may see an appearance. You never know. And because many people are passing these by at this point, the prices are dramatically dropping. So this, again, this is probably a 3.0 to a 4.0 because it's got two color break increases there, a couple along here, but the cover presents well. But I only paid $30.75 for this book. So for me, if it's especially if it's a known character, especially as a hero as opposed to a villain, unless it's a major villain, I, I kind of pass them up. But this book, for that price, it's worth getting. So now's the opportunity to buy things. Because remember, if you are buying for investment purposes, buy low and sell high. Most people tend to do the opposite. All right. Next up, we got three more to go. And so far, I appreciate each and every one of you for watching. And if you've watched this far, tell me what this is. And this is a cat scratcher course having three cats that's definitely a required tool all right so for all the walking dead fans 
I have a second copy of this issue, and that is Walking Dead issue number two, which is the first appearance of Coral, who is no longer in the TV show, spoiler alert, um, and Lori, who is no longer in the Walking Dead TV show or the comic book. But I paid $111 for this book, which for a number two issue is pretty darn good, and the cat seems to like Walking Dead. Uh, it does need a pressing. There is a minor tear on the last page, um, wrinkles, and uh, some color break increases on the back. So this is definitely not a 9.8. And uh, for the price, I paid for it because this book is usually over $200. So um, I have the complete set. I have every one from Walking Dead number one to the current issue, all first prints. So I already have this one. But if I could find something for a decent price, I'm going to pick it up. Uh, pressing will fix certain things. Like there's a color break here, but it doesn't... I'm sorry, there's a... There's a wrinkle here, but it doesn't break color, so it can improve it a little bit, so it's probably about a 9.0 to a 9.2. So for that price, can't complain. Definitely love The Walking Dead. The uh, new series is definitely going in the right direction, This the new season. All right, this is my second copy of this book. Again, not a, not a major um, high grade, but that's all right. I've said it many times. Low grade is better than no grade, especially if that's all you can afford. But this is a book I highly recommend getting. Uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1, which is the first appearance of Sinister Six. Uh, this is about a 2.0 comic. There's a couple of rips here. Along the spine, you can see this book was highly read, which just means it was loved. Color breaking creases here. Lots of them in the corner there. Uh, that happens, especially when people you know, constantly put their comics in and out of bags and boards. And they don't really pay attention, and the lip of the bag catches this corner, and it causes a lot of bends over the years. So primarily that's what happens a lot. But again, this is a book I would highly recommend getting because it looks like they're going in the direction of the Sinister Six. Keep in mind, things can change. Nothing is guaranteed, even if it seems like it might be. Something can always come up, so keep that in mind when you are buying comics for investment purposes. There are always risks involved, but if you pay cheaper prices, um, then it, it's not much of a hurt if you lose out. Um, I love collecting these, like I said, so it doesn't matter if it fails or not, but I paid for this book $171.25. Uh, the cover is detached, but that's okay. Um, you can get at least a 3.0 with a detached cover, but like I said, this is probably closer to a 2.0. Um, this book, if the Sinister Six does indeed happen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, expect this book to get higher and higher, so it still has potential, worth the risk, especially at the price I paid for it. So pick that up before that happens, if it happens. All right, and last but not least, this is one of those books um, that I did not get when I was a kid. I actually had the opportunity to get it, but I chose the other issue, which as soon as you see it, you'll understand why. Um, but I do have, I think, one or two already copies of this book. So third time is the charm. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 121. Absolutely love this cover. It's by John Romita. Uh, this is the, spoiler alert, quote-unquote, death of Gwen Stacy. Um, I remember as a kid when I was holding both of these issues up, trying to decide which one to purchase. Uh, I originally was going to buy issue 121, but I remember, like it was the le the like yesterday, and this was around 1987, 1988. The comic book owner of the store I was going to told me to buy 122 because he said that was going to be worth more because it was the death of the Green Goblin. So I passed this one up as a kid and picked up the other one. And for years, that was the right choice, but it started going in another direction because, of course, most people at this point, uh, unless you're brand new to comic collecting, know that Gwen Stacy is. Spider Gwen, aka Ghost Spider, so her backstory has become a lot more popular. So, this is definitely a book to pick up if you can. Hard to get in higher grades because, especially with the background of a yellow cover, it does um, show a lot of like stains and things like that, fingerprints and things. The only major problem with this book is right here, there is a big color break increase, which means it, you know, it got folded over at some point. Little dirt there and a little couple of wrinkles here, but a dry cleaning and pressing could fix that. So I would say this is probably about an 8.0 to around an 8.5 range, 
which is still not bad for this comic. Um, definitely worth picking up. I spent under $100 for this book. I paid $94.49. So not bad for that book overall. And uh, if Gwen Stacy continues to get more and more popular because of her character, then books like this will continue to become more desirable. So again, if you could find deals, pick them up. And um, that's why I always want to say, you know, the whole, you know, social justice warrior movement, especially Marvel was doing for a while, you know, if they do it the right way, and not make it like you have to bash somebody else or replace another character that you love with something new and say, well, if you don't like it, you're evil or wrong or bad or, you know, a misogynist and stuff. Gwen Stacy being the spider Gwen is a prime example of how you can do it the right way and introduce a f strong female character and make it lovable. Because instead of saying, OK, we're no longer having Peter Parker, now you're stuck with Gwen Stacy. And if you don't like it, you're a racist, you're a sexist or you're a misogynist or whatever. They just said, here, here's an alternate version, an alternate universe version of a character you love who ended up being a different person. Any reason, any surprise why that character did not, you know, became so popular? Because they didn't just replace something. And that's what I think Marvel and Hollywood and, you know, all these creators have to understand. You know, it's clear that it's an agenda that they're trying to do. But if you want to do it smart, just add an additional character. So I, I remember when I was talking about this in a couple of videos months ago, I had people accusing me of, oh, because I'm old, I don't like the newer characters. Well, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I've preached Gwen Stacy for years. I've preached Miles Morales for years. I love those characters because they made different versions of Spider-Man. They didn't just take away my character, Peter Parker, and then say, well, too bad if you don't like it. And, you know, people seem to have a problem with the fact of, you know, when they did that with other characters. That's not smart. Just like why things like the reboot of the Ghostbusters failed, because you, you're never going to win an audience over by pay, taking the people who love the characters and basically flip them the middle finger. That's not how you should do business, and it's a pr clear sign of an agenda-driven motive, and that's never going to go well. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I really hope you watch until the end. Those of you who are our, my power viewers who watch the whole video, make your presence known in the comment section. I want people to know my... Um, my top people that watch actually all the, the entire video. So if you did, make yourself known. Wait until the end to see who's today's surprise subscriber shout out. Like I said, make sure you activate your cashback program if you see any of these and you want to pick them up. Because if you don't activate it before you pay for it, you lose out on the percentage. And why do that? And if you've never signed up for it, the link is in the description. Sign up. It's free. And um, you get that $10 cash back if you buy $25 or more within the first 90 days. So hit subscribe. Hit the comment button. Hit the like button. Just don't hit the person next to you because we know that is not a nice thing to do. And don't forget, it's not you. It's not I. It's We Love Comics. And it's been a while since I've zoomed in. And now you're going to get a spider butt. Ah. Thank you for watching my video. If you want to connect with me on Facebook, just click right here. If you want to join our cashback program and get $10 off your first purchase of $25 or more, click here. And then if you aren't subscribed, we'd love you to join by clicking here.